What is up, everybody? Back with another episode on the Bagged on 20s. We are on episode six today. Um, I want to bring you an episode before Christmas time hits uh, because obviously, you know, everybody's going to be with their family and stuff. So I want to get this out there, uh, announce the giveaway in this video. So stay tuned. Um, we're going to work on the truck a little bit. Uh, being pretty busy, so I haven't gotten a ton done since last episode, but I do have enough video to show you for this episode. Uh, we're going to be getting the LCA tabs welded on the front, uh, cutting out the inner aprons, moving all the wiring and stuff. We are going to modify the lowers a little bit. Fortunately, we're unable to run the tubular upper control arms. We are getting ball joint bind and in order to fix that problem, a lot would have had to go into it to run those uppers. So did some talking back and forth and decided to do an old school trick, which a lot of you guys probably already know of, is when you flip your control arms upside down and then flip passenger drivers around. So um, upside down, flip them around, then you bolt the ball joint on the bottom side. Uh, but I came out with a kit to box them in and make them look really nice. So they do look nice still. Before we get to all of that, the bird's chirping. Before we get all to that, um, last episode we are going to be doing a giveaway for 20,000 we're actually almost up to 21,000 now let's get to it so I'm going to pull up on my phone okay on my phone I have a random YouTube uh comment picker comment picker generator I don't <laughs> anyways I'm going to enter the URL of the last video and we're going to pick out three winners for the $40 roadie fabrication gift cards so let me, okay, so there's 139 unique comments. You guys ready? Sit in your seats. Um, once I say everybody's name, uh, the three uh, lucky winners, I will send you a, I think you could still PM on YouTube, so I'll send you a personal message and then we can exchange information through there. Start, going through the first one. Here we go. Take it a minute. First winner is Mike. His comment is been watching you from the rip. I've got a 91. Oh, I think he meant he was watching since the Purple Crush when it got messed up. I don't know. I've got a 91 D21, wish I could put a pick on here to let you see it. It's no show winner, but a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. I believe it, man. These trucks, a lot of people don't realize what goes into them. Even though they're cheap trucks, they're, uh, they're great stuff. Okay, so Mike is our first $40 gift card winner. All right, we're gonna pick the next one. And start, go for number two. Are we still recording? Let's see here. Takes a minute. La, la, la. Okay, well, this is a long one. Uh, pardon me if I pronounce your name wrong. Irvine, Irvin Gonzalez. Been watching since Little Blue when you first bagged it in your front house. I think the video was how to bag a hard body at your house or something like that. Then the way you describe on how to do it made me want to bag mine. So with the help, I bagged my 97 Chevy C1500 in my own front driveway. And now that you know a lot more in your in your work, got a leak cleaner and also love watching because I get ideas here and there. I even kept up with your garage build when they were working on it. I'm glad you're back with more videos, brother. Keep on trucking. P.S. Hope I win because I want the custom license plate holder. <laughs> Okay, man. Well, guess what? You won, dude. All right. So that is our second winner. All right. Going for the last one. Number three. Here we go. All right. We got a Carlos Uratia. I don't know how you spell that. <clears throat> Anyways, um, I started watching since you had the Matt Gray hard body. You was doing a carbon fiber custom box for that truck. You 
had made your own little paint station and everything. And that was way back. Um, it was a fiberglass box, not carbon fiber, but um, that's cool that you're watching that far back. Um, yeah, I built a little paint booth in the shed uh, to do some paint projects. I only used it a few times and then eventually we tore it down and just put stuff back in there. But uh, awesome, man. Thank you for the comment and you are our last winner. So um, thank you everybody that submitted and commented. I read through each and one, each and one. I read through every single comment and you guys are the best, dude. Um, guys and gals. But uh, I read through every single comment and you guys are awesome and keep making sure we're still going uh you keep me motivated you may not think it but you know getting your feedback helps me stay motivated um so thank you even if you didn't win i read every single comment and you guys are awesome so anyways the three lucky winners i will be sending you a uh message on youtube so be looking for that very shortly and um i'm rambling on so uh let's get started with this episode we got our arm finished in last episode so now we're going to be mounting the tabs that come with the LCA kit um, these are the D21 specifics uh, so all we're going to do is we bolted the stock arm on <clears throat> got that tension tight down and then we put our plates in with a bolt make sure they're snug so that way we can push them up to the frame all the way and they're good just got the control arm being held up by a, a jack so now we can tack the brackets. Once they're tacked, we're gonna keep everything bolted so it stays nice and true to where it needs to be. Weld it all the way around. We'll let it all cool down. Once the metal's finally cooled to the touch, we'll unbolt it and it'll be all done. What I was telling you guys about so the 20s will be up in the firewall the tire will is still really far off the ground I would say by a good three or four inches so as you can see that's where we're hitting right there right in the crook of the firewall so I marked up more because this is about three fingers so I'm gonna give myself about three fingers and then we're probably gonna have to move this guy because i definitely think we're going to be right up in there if not further in um, as well as the engine pole or the hood pole when you pull open your hood uh, back here we'll be fine that's not going any further back because that's as far back as the wheel goes uh, but right here where the fender well comes in that's where it's going to hit so we're gonna do some messing around, see what we can move around and see if we can keep cutting, see if we can get this wheel all the way tucked up in there. The best route to go is, um, see some other people do it. Uh, if you're familiar with infamous Nissan, uh, if you look up uh, just another Pathfinder build by then uh, out of a uh, relaxed atmosphere out in Florida, um, he has a Pathfinder that's stock floor body dropped in 20s. And I looked to see what he did, and he's using all stock components besides two inch drop spindles. Um, and he did the trick where you uh, reverse, or you flip and rotate the stock upper control arms. So what I mean by that is, let's see, this would be a passenger, okay? Because there's the bump stop right on the right side. Uh, this would be a passenger. Normally, the ball joint goes like this. Normally, the ball joint goes like this, okay? And this is the top of the control arm. 
But there's a trick you can do because if you notice, there is a um, angle change where the ball joint mounts. Um, if you have in the regular configuration, it makes the ball joint bind even worse. So uh, people have been doing this for a long time. This is actually my first time trying it, and I'm surprised on how well it works. But all you do is you unbolt the ball joint, cut off the little top lip on the arm, and flip the ball joint on the top side. So now after we do that, you're obviously gonna flip it upside down, but most people say to rotate them. So passenger to drivers, drivers to passenger. So like I said, this is normally passenger like this, put the ball joint on the top, so we're gonna flip it upside down, and now we're gonna put this one on the driver's side. Okay, vice versa with the passenger side. So, uh, I did a test and I don't have any more ball joint bind because of the ball joints now angling in our favor. Um, and I don't know how the arm is made or something. Uh, it just works. Anyways, you can run it like this. It'd be pretty ugly. And if you're going for a big wheel, uh, the bump stop will actually hit the inner skirt, uh, the inner apron, I should say. So, we're going to fix all that today. And, uh, let me show you the finished product. Here is the finished product. All right, so we cut the bump stop out uh, on this side, on this arm, it was on the opposite side. Um, cut all the folded lips off and boxed in the upper control arm to make it look nice, give it a little bit extra strength and cut down on the mass of it. You can kind of see that it's actually definitely a lot smaller in profile now. Um, anyways, so we boxed this in with some 12 gauge and now we can put our ball joint in on the underside, which normally is like this. So it's gonna look really good. Okay, that used to be the top. Okay. But anyways, uh, I'm gonna be selling a fill kit, really cheap, because it's just 12 gauge steel, pretty small. Um, and all you're gonna do is just cut up your old arm, which we'll see here in a minute. Uh, cut the bump stops off, uh, section some things down, and then this goes in place. Right there, once this is cut off, all these edges are trimmed. It's a little bit of work. Um, but if you don't have money for the tubular control arms from a different company, and mine didn't even work. So, anyways, here's what it looks like after grinding it. Looks really good. The inside. So, yeah, I'm happy how this looks. This will look really good once it's all painted up or powder coated or whatever. Uh, like I said, this is now the top. Okay, that used to be the top. Now this is the top. So, looks really clean, super simple, and uh, should uh, work out nicely. All right, we're cutting the uh, bump stop plate off, and all we're gonna do is just cut right where the welds are. Looks like there's three inch long welds. So we'll just cut those welds off, grind it smooth, and we'll go from there. We just cut the lip off uh, on this arm, the right side, but on the other arm, it's gonna be the left side. Anyways, so we cut that off, and now we just made ourselves a cardboard template. Right here, okay. 
And then I'll show you what this is for. So once you made a cardboard template that's pretty darn close, okay, flip the arm over. Okay, uh, this side is shaped differently because of the bump stop. And so we removed the bump stop, we wanted it to be equal so we can put our uh, custom filler plate in and make it nice, look nice and symmetrical. Okay, so once we kind of get this lined up here, So we line our template up, kind of, sort of. Okay. Right there. So now we have our line. So instead of cutting this lip off and then cutting again, we'll, uh, two birds with one stone, cut this major section off, which take that lip off, and then we'll cut the rest of the lip off. And then it should be pretty close to symmetrical on the other side. Perfect! Perfect! template, put it on the program, uh, did a number of different uh, trial pieces, dialing in the fitment for as close as it's going to be. Um, and after four tries, we got a successful piece. Now I was just cutting those out of uh, 18 gauge to not waste a bunch of uh, material. Um, but <clears throat> the replacement patch panels are going to be the same thickness as the Trorm, which is, I measured it and it looks to be pretty much about 12 gauge, uh, so we got a 12 gauge filler. Anyways, uh, the control arm has some, you know, bends in it, so how I'm going to tackle this is my main priority is to get it pretty good up here, so I'll tack it in here and then I'll basically just work back and kind of just work the metal into um, the, the shape. What I'm going to do is, these areas are really nice right in here, how we got an edge to edge. Um, give us a nice place to pull the weld. And then when we grind back, we're not grinding back all the weld. Now that's what I'm talking about. Now if you see here, see how the metal is flush? We can weld this and grind it back, but by the time we grind it back, there's going to be no more weld there anymore, and that's a potential where it'll crack out later. Um, so what we're going to do, is I'm just going to come back with a cutoff wheel on the grinder and I'm just literally going to cut in between this and create a little gap the size, the thickness of the cutoff wheel. So I'll come through in between the tacks, break open a little bit of a gap. That way there's something we can bond together, have the weld fill into a groove. And then when we grind it back smooth to make it look all pretty, we still have weld and uh, integrity in the arm.
got it all welded together, it's cooled down. Uh, now we're gonna grind it. Uh, gonna give you a quick little tip on how to grind. It's pretty easy. <laughs> um, how I like to do it is you grind each 90 first. What I mean by that is, okay, so here's this top. So we're gonna grind just the tops until it's flush with the metal, okay? And then we'll reposition, grind the sides until it's flush with the metal. And then once we've got all that done, and then we'll come back and do the actual rounding itself. So much easier, comes out so much better, a uh, lot quicker. I've been doing it forever, so yeah, let's get to it. Are we down okay and a good sign that it's going to come out good is if, if you do have a pretty nice sharp corner with not a bunch of uh, indents it'll come out pretty nice because if it's too big of an indent you'll probably have to fill it come back and fill it but um, this is looking pretty good we might be able to do uh, just one pass of a grind and be perfect um, so yeah let's get these smooth let's get these smooth one last tip, uh, do the full length. Or if you do stop, try to blend it out. The longer you can do it, the more consistent it'll look instead of having like a bunch of blah, 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 blah. So if you can do uh, well, grind, and round in one, one go, it will come out like almost flawless. If you have to come back and tack, tack, tack again and regrind it, a lot of times it starts to get a little wobbly. Um, so if you can get a good first pass, Gonna look the best. Booster is just slightly in the way, so we're gonna have to move it over. Um, anyways, I need to undo this line. I already got the brake lines undone. Four bolts on the inside are done. Uh, the push rod's still hooked up. But we're gonna get that off. And then figure out the push rod. And hopefully pull this all out. Because the plan is just to move it over about three quarters of an inch. Should have plenty of room. All right, Woo. pedal assembly. You got a little uh, pin right here, and then you got a little clip. Just gotta take the clip out, squeeze these little plastic pieces together, and pull the pin. Now we should be able to pull the brake booster out and deal with the pedal mechanism. How I'm gonna do this, and I think what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm just gonna cut the perimeter of this out all the way around, and then we'll cut over three quarters of an inch, re weld it in, and then as far as the pedal assembly goes, uh, that won't mess with this pull pattern at all, so that'll be fine. Um, it will mess with this, and what I'm thinking about doing with this is I'm going to, from this hole, three quarters over an inch, or wait, if we move that way, okay, so from this hole, move this way three quarters of an inch, I'll put a new hole in there, we're just going to run one bolt on the top, and these four on the front, and that should still be really super solid. Yeah. 
make life easier, I just drew the dimensions out on the computer and plows out a piece of 18 gauge sheet metal. Uh, I think this is actually just a tad thicker than the factory sheet metal. Uh, anyways, so we got it cut out and I just did a uh, rough cut so I can dial it in. Because I already made my cardboard template. So all I have to do now is I'm gonna line up the template like that. Be very careful. I'm gonna flip it over. I'm gonna grab my Sharpie. And we're gonna trace out where we need it. Okay. So, now what we'll do is we'll shear off the extras. Uh, we won't shear too much. We'll go test fit it. If it needs any little trimming, we'll trim it there because we don't want to cut too much off. We're hitting a little more on the lower control arms. Got this cleaned up, got this triangulated. Uh, the next step is to clearance the arm a little bit. Um, when you're going on bigger wheels, the stock lowers. Uh, this will get in the way. Uh, so there's two things you can do, but we're actually gonna do both. Um, so the first thing is, is we're gonna clearance the inner arm here. Okay, so we're gonna trim it along these lines here and then come up and bring it around, okay? And then also we are gonna clearance the uh, crossover section of the frame to also allow the arm to go up nice and high. So we'll get to that part where we get there, but for right now, we're gonna chop this all up. We're not chop it up, but just uh, trim it to fit. If you're on smaller wheels, like my little blue truck, um, you don't need to do this. You'll just have to clearance this maybe just slightly a little bit. Um, but for the bigger wheels, you know, your arm needs to keep pivoting up. So we gotta clearance this out a little bit. So, I got some marks, well, um, lines marked down, about the width of the bottom most section. And you can see it's a little bit it's narrower. Anyways, we're gonna make some cuts just some slit cuts all the way up to this line I got across. So the bottom of this hole here, we're going to slit cut it down. And then once we do that, we will cut a little wedge out of each side like this. We'll make sure this cut right here extends back. And then that way, once this piece is gone, this piece is gone, we're going to take a hammer and if you have a torch, you can use a torch, but we're just going to use a hammer. And we're going to bend in this piece so that it pretty much lines up with here. And then we'll kind of manipulate some of the metal up here to kind of transition it a little better. And then once we're all done with that, we'll uh, go through, um, make sure there's some really nice valleys for our weld to go in. So that way we can weld everything back together and then grind it smooth. And then it'll look like it was never messed with. So let's do it.
Thank you guys for watching. As always, I'm a little bit under the weather. You may kind of tell. <coughs> I cough. Um, <coughs> that was not intentional. Anyways, thank you guys for watching and supporting as always. Um, if you want to use any of the products you see in this video, check my link down below for rotifabrication.com. Um, if you want to email me any questions or comments, you can comment on the video or you can send me an email at blazingcustoms at hotmail.com. The links are in the description. Um, you can follow me on my socials. I have Facebook, Instagram. Facebook and Instagram are the main ones. Um, and then, of course, YouTube. Uh, just Rody Fabrication. And... Yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this episode. Next episode, we'll actually be getting the bag mounts in uh, for these little guys and getting the shock brackets and everything like that. Uh, we just need to get everything clearance first, so now that's ready to go. Once we get some uh, time and some decent weather, it's pretty cold right now in December, we will start getting the bag brackets in. I'll show you a couple tips on how to put these in because a lot of you guys have questions about that. Um, and then we'll keep going on with the truck. So once we get the bags and the shocks in, the next will be, I think, we'll be starting to tub the firewall and the uh, engine bay. We already got it cut up, but we need to actually tub it up and get that all done and figure out how to fish all the wires back through. And then hopefully by, let's see, so it's episode, is it episode six now? Five or six. So hopefully by seven or eight, we will be getting close to a test drive. Fingers crossed. I'm not going to promise you anything, though. Um, but anyways, rambling. Uh, thank you guys for watching, as always. Uh, thank you for the 20,000 subscribers. We're actually almost up to 21,000, so thank you guys very much for all that. And, uh, yeah, keep on trucking. Enjoy your day. Enjoy life. Uh, have fun. There's hummingbirds swarming me. Have fun and everything. Um, don't, sweat the sh don't sweat the small stuff, and... Uh, <laughs> yeah, keep on trucking. Peace.